Well, hello folks. I know the first couple of questions you're going to be asking is where have I been? I shall explain later. But anyway, first, hope you're all well. And this is a bothy camp tonight. Um, this is a beautiful little village just at the back of me here called Durriston. I'll put it on the screen. I've never been here before. I think that's how I spell it or how I pronounce it. And I'm going to be heading up to a little bothy called Kettleton. Kettleton? Kettleton Byer. I'll put a link in the description below. And yes, that's where we're going tonight. It's just after lunchtime here. So, join me from this beautiful area in Dumfries and Galloway to go camping on the wild side. <laughs> So welcome folks, and a big apologies for leaving these big gaps in my channel for videos. A lot been going on, a lot been happening, and as we know the pressures of life and things kind of stop you from doing a lot of stuff. So, this video today is going to be all about bits of life, I think. Not doom and gloom, but reality. Reality. A wee bit of talk about men's health, And all stuff. Not that anything's happened. It's all good. But I'd just like to say I have still been watching YouTube. I still have been watching a good amount of camping videos and I've been itching to get out here for months. And this is just an absolutely beautiful place. Absolutely stunning. I've got a few bits of kit to test out, but it's not new. There's a secret. So, also, just like to say a huge, huge thank you to genuinely everybody that follows the videos, who subscribes. As you do on YouTube and other YouTubers will know, every so often you get a wee update on how your channel's doing. And I get plenty of notifications saying that so many ex people have subscribed to your channel and I'm seriously taken aback. So thank you very much. So if you've subscribed, liked the videos, commented, please, really thank you very much. It means everything. It's nice to know that there's a big, huge community out there that enjoy the videos, enjoy the outdoors. So, yes, absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you can see this in the background here. This bird flying about here is a red kite. There are absolutely stunning.
So yeah, lovely red kite there. And I spoke to one of the locals just as I parked my car in the wee tiny beautiful village that there is a, an abundance of birds of prey up this way, buzzards, kestrels, you name it, and more so the red kites. So it's such a quiet little village, there's not a lot of parking places and so if you're coming up this neck of the woods I'll put a little map where I've stopped and obviously where the bothy is. But yeah, absolutely beautiful and it's a, a sort of farmer's track anyway that you're walking up. So, looking forward to this little bothy. I have googled it before and it is pretty small. <laughs> so, it'll be a cosy one. And looking forward to talk about some gear. Camping gear. That is. I think it's about three kilometres, I think, from the car, the wee village, up to this bothy. It's all sort of gravel road, track, so it's pretty accessible for anybody, or majority of people. So this video wasn't really for a specific thing, it was more just to get me out and get a lot off my chest I think probably what we we all need to do at some point but yes great little track the build up to the festive period of time New Year January I think everybody's feeling it and a lot of people out there are thinking it's just them, including myself. It's a very, it's a very weird situation. Very weird feeling. I think with the cost of living, all the prices going up, everybody's feeling the strain, no matter where you are, where you are. And it's a very difficult situation. And when you're not in the right mindset, things can look pretty bad. But on a note, there is people out there that will help. So. Oof. I think I'm feeling it today. I'm a bit puggled. So... I never had a specific plan what to talk about. So I'm just going to be chopping and changing. So bear with me. <laughs> so with this being my first camp in 2024, I think the exciting, this, uh, the excitement build up to it, to say I'm going to go for camping now. We've passed all the storms, the wild weather's mostly passed. There's no snow in this area. Unlike further up in Scotland here, there is quite a bit. It can be a bit overwhelming when you've not been out for a while. And I was getting all flustered yesterday 
packing my way my stuff trying to bite off more than I can chew as we say and that I'm meaning is that instead of just putting some stuff in a rucksack for an overnight stay I think I'm direct, trying to do too much what am I going to talk about? what do they want to hear? what do, they, what do my subscribers want to hear? instead of just being realistic just showing you the views so there's some things I'm going to talk about when I'm up at the Bothy and it's probably along the lines of health well-being you know all that kind of stuff a wee bit of men's health I'm not a doctor and I'm not planning to give you any medical advice and all that stuff it's just when you see other people talking about it and see what they're going through it actually resonates right through quite a few people and yeah us humans we might be all individual but the bottom line is we more or less go through the same stuff so nobody's alone as we say goodness me I'm actually knackered that just shows you I'm not getting out very much over the Christmas time and New Year and the whole of January it takes its toll on you and the beauty of it I'm only 50 miles from home so it doesn't have to be a really far camp that you have to do and I took the pressure off myself a bit and that was to do a bothy So, better say, if you're new to this channel, never seen my videos before, thanks for stopping by, appreciate it. I'm basically Scotsman on an adventure. Now there's a channel. <laughs> so yeah, I talk about wild camping, bothies, hammocks, all different styles of tents that are in my range, I should say. A wee bit of types of food. Done a bit of bike packing. So if you haven't seen any videos and you like this, give me a wee subscribe or if you're new, just throw a comment in the box. I really do try to answer majority of people. So apologies if I haven't. Some things in life just gets in the way.
so welcome folks this is Kettleton Byer Bothy in the Dunfries and Galloway district of Scotland what an absolutely stunning little Bothy it's just ideal what you need one room probably sleeps about four or five people at a push tiny little fire, couple of chairs, wee table, bothy book and a couple of spades, shovels in there for stuff and in this bit here we have uh, just like an outhouse for ladders and repair stuff this bothy of course is run by the Mountain Bothy Association so absolutely absolutely fantastic what a cracking little place well maintained I love Bothies I love there's no two the same I don't think ever they do a great job so if you've never been to a Bothy before and you're wanting to do one um, go on to the Mountain Bothies Association I'll put a wee link in below and you can check out where their map of Bothies are all over the place uh, I've had to there's scrap pallets in the side there but I have actually brought up some coal and kindling and there's a wee bit of wood there so it doesn't happen all the time that people do generally leave fire lighters, matches, bits of paper um, all ready for the next bothy because that's kind of how we work up here and everywhere else so yeah it's probably a wee idea to bring a wee handful of coal or some fire lighters or a, one of these log wooden log things that you put in a, a fire it's not a very big fire this one either so but it's ideal it'll heat that place up very quickly I think we have in the surrounding area I don't know what's away up that way forest uh, farm tracks and way into the hills for some reason we have an old bathtub there that's flushing out some fresh water um, obviously boil it and what an absolutely cracking spot anyway while we've still got daylight hit the drone Saves a lot of hassle if you just make soup and bring it in a sort of reasonable container just to pour in and ready, just heat up so you can just get yourself together. Yeah, what a lovely cosy little bothy. I think there could be potentially six people in here. I'm going to guess six people. Oh, goodness me. I'm not quite ready to light this fire yet. There is quite a lot of wood there that I've cut out. And there's more under the table there. So there is... Um, and coal and kindling. So there is quite a bit here for tonight. So, as I said earlier, coming up the road there on the way to the Bothy, this camp wasn't for anything in particular. It was more or less just to get me out the door. Because as 
like many other people, things happen in life and so your mental health can deteriorate up and down the place. And I personally found it very difficult to get out. I don't know what was going on. Um, I just think things in life take hold of you that for some take you in a different direction so it does play in your mind a little bit that you just couldn't get outside to do stuff. So we've probably already been, been there um, when you're feeling up and you're feeling down you just can't be bothered doing anything and before you know it it snowballs into a week and then the dark nights, rain, wind, all the rubbish weather doesn't help at all. I've been there and it is difficult to go out but you will notice the change when you get out. That's what I'm trying to say because I've been there and really toiled to get out the door to do something in the camping world. To even go for a walk was a big deal. So hats off to all the people who are trying their best and that's all you can do is talk, just try something. I'm not here to tell you what to do. It's more or less what I did. Um, I did struggle. I'm going to admit it, I did struggle. And, and over the Christmas time and New Year and into January, it's just, it's just been an awful time and I don't think the cost of living's helped whatsoever. I think we are getting battered from every corner that everything we do seems to suffer and It's an awful situation to be in that when you want to go camping or you need to go camping and they're throwing up the prices of food and the way things are, it, it kind of makes you take a back seat for what you need to enjoy yourself to do to feel good. Even by getting out for just a drive or a walk is by far better than staying in the house. And I know that's easier said than done in many cases, but um, if there's any help that people can give, leave a drop a comment in the bottom there that if, if you found a struggle, just um, let us know how you managed to get on with it and do it, push through. I absolutely love the outdoors and wild camping and it hit me pretty hard. Um, not doing anything since October and I'm gutted because I felt like I didn't know how to pack my rucksack, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was always writing down ideas of where to go, what to do. You know, I could camp here, I could camp there. I just never took that step to do it. And here we are. So it's possible. There is light. Just need to push that wee bit harder, if you can, go out with somebody. You don't need to go far, to be honest, to go camping. I know I'm 50 miles from home, but um, technically you could just go 5 or 10 miles if, if that's your nearest place. Or But when you're out, you will feel absolutely the weight lifted off your shoulders. So I'm rooting for you to get out if you were toiling. Please, please try. So this soup is really going down very well. Um, I've got water there as well for more cups of tea. I've got sweets and chocolates and uh, some more pasta and things. So I've got plenty of food for sufficient for tonight. Um, I've got a new airbed I want to test out. Um, I can't really film it in here, so I'm going to have to blow it up outside. Um, and the beauty of most of my kit here today is it's not new. I have bought this all second hand. So that leads me on to say that when you come camping, you don't have to buy the best stuff. You just have to buy stuff that's usable and workable um, to 
what you need it for, your best ability or your, um, yeah, just try something on these sort of free sites and things like that, that various people give away stuff for cheap or give it away for free. So there is always a possibility of doing that. Worth a look. So I also wanted to talk about men's health. Maybe a cringy subject for a lot of people out there that are that way inclined. Um, but just to put you in my position that um, nothing drastic has happened, just to put that clear. Um, I'm at that age now where I've just, I'm just over 50, believe it or not, yes I am. And that comes at a time where you have to get checked for various things, and one of them being prostate cancer. Um, quite a scary word for a lot of people, and probably quite rightly so. So I just wanted to sort of make a little thing to say, I went and got a PSA test done, which is a blood test, in and out from the nurse or the doctor, and they send your results away, they check your kidneys and they check your blood, various things, and then I went back a week later, got the results, which were fine, and got a quick examination as well, which is basically the doctor checking the prostate, 20 seconds worth of um, medical examination and done and dusted. It's as simple as that guys. Um, for those that have done it, absolutely fantastic. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Yes, there is the stigma of all the ins and outs. I'm quite sure the doctor has seen more than enough that he doesn't really care, to be honest. Um, so please, so if this helps you to go and get checked from the doctor, please, please do. Um, I would love to hear if this has made somebody go to the doctor and just gave you that little bit of reassurance or if you felt niggly, go and speak to your doctor. Um, so yeah, I'd appreciate it if you would go and yeah, we guys really need to go. So I got all my results back and I'm in the all clear. So after that, that just leaves you to get like a basic PSA test done once a year. Unless you have any symptoms that are um, not showing right or you're querying or something, please go back to your doctor. A basic PSA test can show any signs um, if there is a, an issue. That's all I'm going to say on it, but I will leave a link to the various locations to go. Um, and you can speak to your doctor for free or your nurse or something like that, that if you want a bit of guidance for what actually happens. So I'll try and leave a link, link to a website about the procedure and all that stuff. So please guys, if you can, for those over 50, if you've hit that mark, um, yeah, ah, oh, absolutely perfect. And you can warm your hands up at the same time. So hopefully you're all right. Everybody out there that's watching this video, um, thanks for joining me on this wild camp, wild bothy camping. Um, just up here for a night and just glad to get away and clear my head, get out the door, get into the wild. Um, I've got a few candles here as well which will help light the place up and I'll get the fire on later on. So all good. So yeah, hopefully you're all doing well. Catch you in a bit. Just one of the new bits of kit I brought. Might seem silly, but 
I've seen a few people using them and it seems to be the thing. It's this foam square mat and it just goes up like that. Just basically for sitting on. Saves getting the backside sore, cold, wet. Oh, never actually used it before but <laughs> it's blooming good. So cheers folks. Welcome to this little bothy. Can't beat a little cup of tea settling in. So this was just basically a video for my first outing of 2024 and probably like majority of people up and down the UK January's been a bit of a write-off hasn't it? All these storms, wild winds, rain, snow, sleet doesn't make it really appealing in many ways to go out and have the most awful night. I've seen a few videos already where people braving the elements only to be torn apart by the wind and rain. I've been there and I've done it and I've got the t-shirt so I don't need to do it again. It's not cold. I think it's supposed to be about 13, 12, 13 today. I can't remember what that feels like. So I'm just going to sit and enjoy this cup of tea. Enjoy the peace and quiet. So just what I say as well, hats off to all the people that I um, watch your videos. So if I've commented on a video or I've gave you a thumbs up or something, not that you'll know, but if I've gave quite a few thumbs up to folk. Um, yeah, well done for your videos. It's good to see a, a wide range of creative YouTubers out there from showing us camping videos up and down the country and all the wee tips and techniques. It's all these wee things that we take on board and I think I took a wee bit of fright because I didn't know how to pack my bag, my rucksack. I, 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 for some strange reason, I, I looked at myself and felt I don't even know how to pack my rucksack anymore. It seems it's been that long, so it does lose touch. I'm here, I'm packed. I've probably brought too much stuff as usual. I tried not to and I've been camping for over 40 years. Still take too much. Still don't get it right. Every camp's different and I think we pack for a week to come away for one day. You'll all know what I'm on about. So this is a cheap way of kind of learning how to camp, in a way, if you want to call it that. Mountain Bothy Association don't really charge you anything for staying in these bothies. The only thing they do ask is to keep it clean. No vandalism. Leave it as you, you found it, in a way, or even better, as, as we say. Um, take care of it, respect it, respect others that come and use it and they'll be here for everyone. It's actually quite a nice feeling walking up to the Bothy, not knowing if there's anyone in it or potentially who's going to turn up. But as long as there's coal and there's a fire and logs and kindling, well, I think that's a good welcome site for anyone, isn't it? This is a place that's so peaceful you can forget about everything. And I think everybody needs a bit of that. No matter who you are, your lifestyle, you definitely need a bit of alone time, quiet.
quiet time, peaceful time, and think about nothing, absolutely nothing. Right, okay folks, just going to go, just showing you what I do out here actually, because it's a bit too dark in there. Um, basically I'm going to show you my sleep system. Um, more because I'm using stuff that's second hand and I picked up and I've never used before. So I mean, this Gore-Tex sheet is basically, I, I take it just about everywhere. Keeps you a wee bit dry, you can put stuff on it. Um, I'm quite sure you'll have seen it in other videos where I've laid out all my kit. So basically, I'm doing this to show you that you don't have to spend a fortune, right? Okay, that, that's the bottom line. If you want to do wild camping, or you want to do bothies, you don't have to do anything. You have to go and buy anything expensive. It's just, there's just no need, okay? So, air pillow. There you go. One air pillow. Probably buy that in the shops for a pound, all right? Quite sturdy at that, you can put a jacket over it or something like that, or a jumper, stick it inside the jumper and sleep on it. Just let the air out and it just squashes down a little bit further, okay? You don't need to spend 30, 40, 50 quid on a pillow. Absolutely no need. If you're into it, totally go for it. Right. Um, yeah, camera keeps cutting out there, so sorry about that. Um, so, dealing with the pillow, a couple of pound does me fine. So the next thing is my sleeping bag, or like the mummy effect sleeping bag. Um, sleeping bags are an absolute minefield for people so I'm not going to tell you the best ones and what ones are rubbish. Um, three or four seasons three or four seasons is going to be your ideal one to be honest. Um, your shape, colour, zip, Zip length. This is a full zip length. You can get ones that are half. Um, different temperatures, different coldness degrees. So it is a bit of a minefield. So you probably better go into a shop and speaking personally to one of the specialists in there that deal with sleep bags. This one does me fine, and never had any worries about it. So on top of that. This is something that I've never used before, but I've had it for ages, and it is a sleeping bag liner. Some people probably already use them. If you have, <laughs> I've never used it, I've never had to use it, it's not a necessity. So basically this is a poly, it's poly cotton, so it's not waterproof by any means. It goes inside your sleeping bag, and then you go inside this as well. Uh, got a bit of a hood so that you can put the put your pillow inside it and then goes inside your sleeping bag. It's basically to keep you warmer and protect your sleeping bag from having dirty clothes. So it gives you that little bit of reassurance that if you're jumping into your sleeping bag and you've got dirty trousers or whatever and you don't have a change, this will kind of keep you warm. So it's better to wash this than having to dry clean the sleeping bag in a way. So that's my sleep system. And the other thing I've got here today is a new air mat. I've already blown it up because um, the camera already stopped while I was blown it up. So basically it's got two sections. It's got main body for lying on and it's also got separate blow up bit for the hood. It's a a Mark A M O R C. Never heard of it. Don't know how much they are. I'll probably look into that and put a link in the description below, along as long with all this stuff. Um, this is a new kind of air mat. Normally, the one I've been using is a Berghaus Peak Self Inflate mat, which is probably about two centimeters thick. Does me okay. Just think something different as we move on is. A bit thicker and uh, takes a wee bit more weight and disperses everything and a bit more comfort because that's what we want. Eh? So this blow-up system is there's two togs 
here, you can pull that right out and it'll let all the air out in a winner. Or you can put the stopper in there and you can blow it up so you can push air into it, take a breath and it doesn't let any out. So it's, it's, it's good system. And then put the cap over it as, again as well. So this is going to be my... Feels pretty comfy actually. Um, not as noisy as what I hear other more expensive roll mats go for. So with a wee bit of luck, I'll have a good sleep tonight on this. In the sleeping bag, in that bothy, with the fire on. fantastic all my worries all the anxiety of stress has gone so if you want to give Bothy life a try absolutely go for it I would highly recommend it you never know who you meet people might come through that door but they're all here for the same reason and that's just to get away from busyness in life and just to see the countryside just absolutely fantastic but sitting here with the fire is just you'll know the words yourself <laughs>
evening I've just spent um, there's been a few books left and a few of them are the Mountain Bothy Association um, things and I've just had a quite a wee browse through them all just to just to see what they like and it's actually they're quite interesting little books I've filled my hot water bottle put it in the sleeping bag I've got some heat pads there that I've cracked open I've got everything ready there I've had a, just had a cup of tea to finish off the night I've poured, put um, all the coal on the fire so that's going to tick away nice and slowly all night I'll just close it up and that'll heat the place hopefully for the most, most of the night I'm feeling quite weary now so it would be a good time to say I'm just going to head to my bed I've got no idea of time it's probably about 8 o'clock <laughs> and I suppose that's quite a good thing that you lose track of time when you're in a bothy because I think we're all governed and ruled by time and to be away from it all probably knocks you out of the sink a bit but it actually makes you forget about worries so it's a nice feeling not knowing what time it is so a very enjoyable evening and what well, a little cosy bothy so far so great that that calls on now and uh, yeah I'm actually looking forward to my bed so I shall say good night and we'll see you in the morning. everyone. Well, wasn't the best sleep I had last night. A couple of reasons. It uh, was very early on when I went to my bed. So I had a lot of hours to try and sleep. <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, secondly, it was very dark. Like pitch dark in that bothy. So I tried to leave a candle burning most of the night as long as it could which helped a little bit and thirdly my so-called good-looking air bed actually decided to deflate quite a lot um, there is just a little bit of air in it so need to go back to the drawing board with that one so might have a puncture somewhere I, I, I don't know and uh, but I blew it back up on and off it's not ideal, completely not ideal. But anyway, I've got the cup of tea and I'm going to get my breakfast. Bit of a cold breeze this morning. But it's warm enough, so I'm warm, I'm okay. But yeah, what a lovely, beautiful area this is. Absolutely cracking. Anyway, slept, not bad, <laughs> I should say, <laughs> if you call it sleep. Just going to get something else to eat.
out. Absolutely beautiful. I've just swept out the bothy there, tidied it up, cleaned out the fire. I've made my little mark in the bothy book. Um, washed up everything, all packed up, and had a delightful little stay in this bothy. Absolutely perfect. Very cosy, very dark, but uh, enjoyable, very enjoyable. So if you've come this far in the video, thanks very much. Um, if you'd like to see more, you can subscribe to the channel if you like, have a wee check out. Um, but yes, if you have any comments on the airbed, bothies, anything, just give me a wee comment below and I will try and get back to you. But thanks very much for watching the video and we'll catch you next time camping on the wild side. Cheers for now.